We have a national illness service, not a national health service. Absolutely. That's you know, right. I walk into a general practice, uh, as I do in Southampton, and what do I see all around the walls? Tobacco smoking, uh, diabetes, um, hypertension, nothing on air pollution at all. And yet over 40% of our primary care facilities are sitting in illegal um, areas of, of illegal uh, air pollution. And I look at my own hospital, which is actually now changing, which is great. And we have diesel generators in the grounds outside the operating theater, uh, should the uh, electricity fail. We have ambulances with their engines running permanently uh, outside the hospital where some of the sickest patients are with COPD and with uh, heart disease. We have cars trying to park with long lines of vehicles trying to get into a hospital for the outpatient clinics for the very diseases that air pollution is contributing to. And there they are pouring out pollution in that very environment. So the interconnections here are very considerable. And I think uh, as health, healthcare professionals, they employ 9%, NHS employs 9% of the country's pop, uh, population. So it's a very large group of people. We need to stand up and, and, and speak out and become champions and advocates within our own communities and try and persuade those communities to change because by setting examples, others will follow. And there's nothing like the health professional to set examples as we saw with tobacco smoking and more recently with passive smoking, where the health professionals really got behind it, despite the lobbying, and were able to get the law changed and look at the difference around us now, it's phenomenal. <laughs>